Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Will you please stand and sing with us? I mean, you don't have to stand, but if you would like to stand and sing with us. Grace is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Lord, and just ask that you just help us to get everything out of it that you intended for us, Lord. In your name, amen. So greet somebody near you, or if you really want to go all the way across and run around, that's cool too. Welcome. We're glad you're here today. Suppose the other days. Uh, no, I'm just joking. So, if you are not in the loop, you aren't part of our texting thing, please text welcome to 509-309-0958. You will get a link back. Please fill out that information. It gives us your name and kind of connects you to a phone number, gives us an email. That way, anything that we have going on, we can send information out to you. And then Text LOOP to that same number, 509-309-0958, because that puts you in the loop, which means any announcements we have will get sent to you. And answer all the questionnaires and stuff so that we know whose number is whose. Yeah. <laughs> and upcoming, we have uh, Pastor Randy's memorial service next Saturday at 2 o'clock here, and um, it's going to be a good but tough time. Mm -hmm. And so Mercy Me is going to have a concert on April 8th over in Tri-Cities. We have secured a few tickets. Um, we're offering those to, uh, we're making those available to the youth first, but if there's tickets left over and you'd like to go, they're $27 a piece, which is really not that bad for a concert. And we have an all-church work, work party day um, on Saturday, April 9th, and I believe it starts about 9 o'clock, so we have some things that need to be cared for in the spring, so please come if you've got time. Give us a couple hours. At 6.30 at Pioneer Park, the Easter sunrise service, and the Saturday before that, there is going to be a time where we are going to be setting up chairs and getting everything ready for that, so I believe we, can we could always use some extra help, because I think we're going to try and set up 400 chairs. 
And that Just might be couple. something that's on the loop. Yeah, it would come on the loop if we need your help. <laughs> so the men's retreat's coming up May 13th through the 15th, and that is gonna be for not just our church, that's gonna be for the um, Pacific Northwest of Church of God up at Double K. And I believe what I heard is $100 a piece for that. Um, if it's different or it changes, or I misheard what Tim told me, I will let you know as soon as we can. And we have an arts all church camp out. If you like to camp, call the number, the 541 938 5330 and ask for Courtney. Tell her that you are part of the New Beginnings because otherwise they will tell you that the camp is already packed out full. I do believe that there is some camp spots up in the meadow area. That's it. If you don't want to camp, please come up for the day. Come up for a few hours. We have a lot of activities happening on Saturday and on Sunday we will have our worship um, time up there and message. Yep. So one other both days come stay as long as you want i think we have to be out of there by noon on around noon I around think. noon on yeah. sunday but um the worship time up there is also always amazing we have the mountains behind usually where tim is preaching to us for us with us um so september 9 through 11. and we are hoping to put together an easter egg hunt to go along with our sunrise service and then for our kids here on Sunday morning, um, we've got like a thousand eggs to fill. So we really could use candy donations. And if you could get them here by April 3rd, that'd be awesome. But anytime before Easter would be great so we can fill up all the eggs. And if you want to fill eggs, let me know because I'd love extra hands filling eggs. <laughs> so join us now for worship, if you would please. Feel free to stand or sit, whatever you feel like doing. This 
solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, stored by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkest slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands, Still my 
over them and just protect them and just put somebody in in the life of Putin who's strong in your faith Lord and you to be able to uh, put some wisdom within that man Lord and 
just uh, show him the way that he should be right now, not the way that he is. And we just ask that you be with the, the Rogers family and the Falter family as they are both dealing with loss this, this morning, Lord. And we just ask that you would give them comfort, give them, give them uh, some peace this morning, Lord. And uh, we just also ask that you be with Pastor Randy's brothers and their physical healing, Lord, right now, and touch their bodies and and heal them, whatever it is that there's going on with them physically. Uh, we ask that you would also be with Bethany as her migraines are coming and going right now, Lord, and we just ask that you would uh, just touch her body and uh, just heal her from these migraines and whatever is causing them, Lord, to just take that from her and just uh, give her some peace and some comfort to this morning, Lord. And also be with uh, Jan Eichley as she is recovering from surgery and just help her body to heal quickly and to get her back and uh, going in the way she was before her surgery, Lord. And also be with uh, Julie this morning and just give her peace as she's getting ready to go undergo some surgery and just uh, give the doctors uh, the wisdom of being able to perform that surgery, Lord, in the, the, the best that they can and help her to be able to recover uh, from this surgery quickly. And we also ask that you be with Shokel's brother, Ron, and uh, just uh, touch his body, Lord, as he's de dealing with some liver uh, issues, Lord, right now. And we just ask that you would touch his liver right now and heal his body. Uh, please touch uh, Roy Scott this morning and continue healing him from his cancer. And Lord, we just ask that you would uh, just take this cancer from him and just heal his body as well, Lord. Uh, be with Rebecca Mize and her bone fracture and help her to heal from that. And with Pastor Jesse Wilkins and Melanie Jones as they're both recovering from surgery, Lord, we just ask that you would heal them and help them to recover quickly and be back to um, the range of motion and the abilities that they've had before, Lord. And we just ask that you would also be with all of the military, the police department, all the correction officers, Lord, everyone that puts their life on the line every day when they go to work for our protection, for our freedom, Lord, that we have to be able to serve you and to be able to uh, worship you the way that we can, Lord. And we just ask that you be with the uh, uh, government officials, Lord, Every, all of them, whether we like them or we don't like them, Lord, we don't agree with them or we do agree with them. We just ask that you would be with them and give them the wisdom, whether it's directly to them or through people around them, Lord, that uh, know you and love you, Lord, and just help them to uh, give our government the wisdom that they need to perform their jobs, Lord. In your name, amen. All right, give me the clicker clicker thingy. Good morning, everyone. I know, I'm like going off, off the rails over there to get my notes that I probably will barely look at because, and you're cheating because you were here first service, Dustin, and that's cheating because I guarantee you, hopefully it'll be just be the same but different because... <laughs> It's never the same when I talk. I'll tell you that right now. That's why this whole two service thing for me is a little weird because I try and let God speak through me as best as I can and that doesn't always necessarily go straight off the notes. <laughs> so, fair warning. So we're going to talk a little bit about anchors. It's going to take me a little bit to get to the anchors part as Dustin notes, but that's okay. We'll get there. So, in 1 Peter 5, 1 through 10, if you want to stand, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to tell you you have to, because I know not everybody can, but we're good with that. And now, a word to you from, to you who are elders in the churches. I, too, am an elder a, and a witness to the suffering of Christ, and I, too, will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you, 
Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord over the people assigned to you, your care, assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all the people, and all of you, dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and, the right, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert, watch out for the great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation, all power to him forever. Amen. That was much better. Was it better? All right. Progress. Progress. I appreciate that. So, a little bit about myself, because I'm sure a lot of you don't know, like, who this person is standing up here. Maybe you do. But I grew up, my dad was a pastor. Well, I didn't always know my dad was a pastor, because he was a high school teacher and a soccer coach. And football coach at the high school until I was 11 and then I found out well there was a life before that and he was a pastor before that but he was in between churches in the time I remembered when I was a kid until we moved up here and then he became a pastor again and he was a pastor over at Blue Mountain for 15 17 years something like that um, but I went to church every Sunday every Wednesday sick not sick I was always there um, and I always told myself, I'm not going to be a pastor. I don't want to do that. I'm, that's my dad. I'm not going to be a pastor. So then I had my first mission trip. I went on my first mission trip when I was 16 to Guatemala and Costa Rica. And that's when I started feeling like called to some sort of ministry. I kept telling myself, I'm still not going to be a pastor. I'll be a missionary. That's different, right? Right? That's different being a missionary than a pastor. I keep telling myself that, but um, I went on another mission trip a couple years later. We went to Atlanta, uh, worked with an organization called Church on the Street with Kurt Salerno, and did a lot of mission stuff with uh, the homeless down there in Atlanta. We helped build some walls, build some structures. Uh, they, we were putting in some bathrooms and showers, I think, in one of their... Uh, um, the, why can I not think of it? Homeless facility. Sure, we'll go with that. Um, and we also did, um, so they did a thing like every night there was a different like parking lot that was doing a little church service and feeding them and stuff like that. So we did do some help with that as well. Um, and so just kind of kept building this whole like, I need to, I, I feel feeling called to doing some sort of missions. Uh, in college, I was part of InterVarsity at WSU, and if does anybody know what InterVarsity is? Anybody ever heard of InterVarsity? Has anybody heard of Young Life? Okay, a little bit more. It's kind of like a mini church for kids at school, basically. And so I was part of that, and we went on another mission trip. So I was like going on lots of mission trips, kind of, I guess. Um, we were out here at Brochy Orchards, and at the church we were staying at, there was this pastor there, and he like just kind of looked at me and he goes, were you a pastor's kid? And I was like, yeah. And he's all like, well, I think you're gonna be a pastor. And I was all like, I think you're wrong. And he's all like, well, one of two things happens with pastor's kids, either you become a pastor or you quit going to church. 
and you're here, so I think you're going to be a pastor. And I kept telling him he was wrong. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> after we came to church here, um, we'll just go with the last few years. To, but we came to church here. I started working with Pastor Randy and started feeling the call to uh, be a little bit more involved here at our church and uh, working with the youth. Uh, and every time I would lead the youth, Randy would always say, I can't wait to see you preach. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Here we are. Uh, so needless to say, over the last 22 years, I kept telling God no, and he kept telling me, we're going to get you there. <laughs> so thanks to my wife, this service, this message has been like a year and a half in the making, and she's like, you need to do this now. And I was like, maybe. <laughs> and I guess 18 years of marriage is kind of, you have to listen to them. So. so yes, that's my wife right over there. For those of you who don't know, Brianna, she sings up here. She does all kinds of stuff around here. But 18 years today, so that's Today's our anniversary, so thank you. Um, that being said, back into what we have to talk about from the Bible. Um, so when I read this message, when I read this passage, I see it as when when he's talking about elders. The way I see that is shepherds, because. We're talking about elders in a, in a way of, like, yes, you're older than me. Or, I mean, I work as a electrical maintenance technician, and I am a lead electrical maintenance technician, and so I have to help and work with guys and help them and teach them how to do things. That being said, I have a guy who I work with that's 70 Three, I believe. So he's a lot older than me, but he doesn't know a lot of the newer stuff, and that's okay. So I have to help him with those. So the way I see that is just because you're an elder or a shepherd doesn't mean you're older than somebody, right? You're older, I'm older in my knowledge of electrical stuff than he is because I continue to learn the new stuff that comes out. He chooses not to. That's okay. It happens. So those of us who are continuing to grow in our faith and continuing to grow in our walk with God are the shepherds that need to be leading flocks. And those flocks could be anything. Could be your family. Could be uh, people you work with. Could be. Um, we'll set that down could be um, a small group. Oh, geez. Why is this thing so sensitive? <laughs> uh, but it could be, there's a lot of things that could be your flock that you're supposed to take care of. And like it says, we are to guide that flock. We're not to lord over that flock. We are to show them how to walk with Christ by our actions, by what we say, and just be there for them when they need help, right? So part of that is we have to treat each other like family, right? How many like your family all the time? You like your family all the time? They never do anything to annoy you? Huh? But how many love your family all the time, right? There's a difference between liking and loving, right? Trust me, I got two brothers. I don't always like them. But I always love them. And so if we treat each other like family, then we should be able to, you know, rely on each other like family, right? So when you're in a tough spot, do you call your family? No. <laughs> Come on, you can speak up. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm used to like dealing with youth kids that always speak up. So 
It's all good. Um, but we need to treat each other like family. And that means we need to be there in the tough times. We need to be there when times are tough, right? Because you need to be able to rely on each other. All right. In 1 Timothy, it says, Do not let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in what you live, in your life, in your faith, and in your purity. So, once again, like, it doesn't matter if you're AJ, or if you're Alex, or if you're Bob Willoughby, or whoever. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. We have to live our lives in a way that everyone around you can see that you are a Christian, right? Because what happens when you're at work and everyone's telling dirty jokes and you're laughing and maybe you're telling some dirty jokes or whatnot and then you're like, hey guys, let's go to church. How many people are going to be like, pretty much sure you're the one that needs to go to church. (laughs) You know? So it's just we've got to remember and watch ourselves and I have to do the same thing. I have to watch myself with the way I act around my kids around at work, you know. It's not always easy. It's not always the popular thing to do, but we got to do it. So, for for those people who are called to be shepherds, called to be leaders, we've got to be able to live our lives in a way that shows other people around us that we are Christians and that we are somebody that they can rely on, right? In Matthew 10, four, or Matthew 18, it talk, in 10 through 14, it talks about the story of the lost sheep. And in the story of the lost sheep, everybody knows that story? Does anybody not know that story? Okay, it's a short story. So, shepherd's out, he's got 100 sheep. One sheep, he's counting his flock, and he's only got 99, so he's got to go find the one lost sheep, right? So he goes out, and he, goes, he keeps the 99 together, and goes out looking for that one lost sheep. So if you're a shepherd that's entrusted to a flock, you can't let that one sheep just go. You know? If they make you mad, and, you, and they like walk, and they go off, you can't just let them leave. You could be mad as you want. Anyone a parent? Your kids make you mad? It doesn't mean you just get to like give up on them. It doesn't mean maybe they don't talk to you. Maybe, I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't give up on your family. You don't give up on your kids. No matter how much they make you mad, no matter how much you want to just say, fine, be that way, you go be that way. You just can't, right? So, I was told not to say, um. I'm not saying, um. I say so a lot, though. Just change the word. Um. <laughs> she's over there looking at me. Uh, um. So, how many know, how many, like, how many anchors would you say are on a boat? Anybody nautical? Depends, by, depends on the size of the boat, right? But every, every boat's got more than one anchor, right? Huh? No? Okay, maybe if you're in, like, a, like, six-foot dinghy, might only have one anchor. I don't know, I'm not very nautical, but... According to Acts 27, the boat they were in, they had eight anchors. So in Acts 27, 28 through 29, they dropped a weighted line and found that the water was 120 feet deep. But, the, but a, little while la- a little later, they measured again and found it was 90 feet deep. So they knew they were going towards the shore or they were going to run aground or something. At the rate they were afraid, it would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore so they threw four anchors out from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight so I'm going to drop that thing again I know so um, 
So if, if we're looking at that the way I see it, what is your anchors? You already know the answer, so. I don't huh? remember. You don't remember? That's okay. It's recorded, so you can watch it as many times as you want. So what, what would you say in, when you're in a storm in your life, what would be your anchor in your mind, in your opinion? And, but Jesus? I mean, go ahead. God's word. God's word? All right. So what would you say the solid rock, right? Every, you hear about the solid rock. What's the solid rock? It's Jesus, right? The word of God, Jesus. So how can both those things be the same thing? The anchor is what holds you in place, right? And so when you're in a storm and you can't see where you're going, you can't see every, what's going on. And I know some of us are, are at the point in our lives that we can just grab that Bible and we can try and anchor ourselves, right? But a lot of times when it gets rough out there, we need other people around us. We need those that we can count on, those that we can call to anchor us down to the Word of God that can anchor us. And I know that we all like to count on Mr. Timothy, right? And he does a great job of being there for us, right? But like a, today, he's not here. Hi, Tim. I know you're watching. Um, but he's not here. And that's okay. But we have to have other people that we can call, other people that we can, that can be there for us to be those anchors. And those are those shepherds that we have around us. Those shepherds that, and, and, there's, and no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, how young you are, uh, where you're at, you, at some point in time, you're going to be called to be a shepherd of a flock. How big that flock is, it could be one person. It could be 100 people. I don't know. That's not my job to find out. That's somebody else's job. Um, but we're, we're all going to be called to be a, flock, be a shepherd. And, there, and there's always going to be a time when you're going to be part of the flock. Either way, you're going to need somebody to, have, to be able to rely on, to call, to be that anchor for you, to help you hold you hold you firmly in place when you're going through tough times in your life um see you said that to me no i'm saying um that's okay excuse me so the more anchors we have the better right the more the more people we can rely on the more people around us that we can that we can contact so Everybody has everybody's contact information, right? Because I don't. So how are you supposed to try to hold anybody when you're going through a tough time? That's why I think we need to get back to something that is very important, and that is small groups, right? And so I think the anchors in our lives are those small group leaders, are those those people who we can call if we can't get a hold of Tim or whoever. That's, we've got to have more than one person to rely on. And that's where I've, I, I've really felt strongly about this for the last couple years. But, um, and, ex and then the whole like pandemic thing hit and everybody's like, oh, can't go around people. I know, I know not everybody, I know, but just as a, in general. So, so I think now is the time that we need to, to bring these small groups back. Did anybody grow up going to youth group? Yeah, yeah. When was when youth group? <laughs> <laughs> when was youth group, right? It was on Wednesday. 90% of the time, youth group's on Wednesday. Why is it on Wednesday? Yeah. So what are small groups? There's some time throughout the week, right? Not, and, and 
to me, a small group is not just, it, it's not just like, hey, all of the married couples that are of, between ages of like 50 and 70, or all the married couples between the ages of 30, 25 and, and 30, or, or whatever, like that's not a small group, that's not necessarily a small group. Not saying it can't be, but we used to go to a small group where we were the youngest ones there by 30 years. Not even joking. But it was great. We had a great time together. We were able to learn from other people. And I think that small groups need to be diverse. Because, yes, we all need something to be that's going to join us all together. But that doesn't always have to be age or relationship status or any of that stuff. There's, there's all kinds of things. Say you like barbecue. Who doesn't like barbecue? Nobody. <laughs> Everyone likes barbecue. So, but I mean, there's all different kinds of things that, that you can base your small group around, right? And so, what we're looking at right now, and Tim knows this, because I talked to him about it, and he's on board with it. We are looking forward as we go from here to get people to sign up who would like to be a small group leader. And we are going to have a little small group for the small group leaders because in September we are going to start small groups. But before that, we need to make sure all the leaders are going to be on the same page because we got to make sure we're all looking in the same direction, right? So there is a sign-up sheet over there. Don't jump up right now. It's okay. There's going to be plenty of time. For all those people that would like to be small group leaders, there's going to be a sign-up sheet over there. And I just ask for two things. A name, because, well, it's kind of hard to be like, hey, Ruth, I thought you said you are going to be a small group leader. No. Name and contact information and how you'd like to be contacted. Granted, if you put an email on there, I know you want to be emailed, so that's not a big deal. But if you put a phone number on there, text, phone, call, whatever, something, so I know if I need to call you or I need to text you. And yes, if you put your name on there, I'm going to call you or text you or email you. And she's going to make sure I do it so you know what's going to happen. <laughs> So, well, already did all that. Why does it always go faster the second time? <laughs> Practice. Yeah. Is it better? Oh, cool. All right. So. What are we looking at now? We are looking at Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another. Acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meetings together as some people but do some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day has of his return is drawing near. So, once again, we need to get together, right? We need to get together and not just Sunday at church and say, all right, that was great. Now we go back and then we come back. Oh, that was great. How many times in the last two months have we mentioned we need to do small groups again. We need to do small groups again. Well, guess what? We're going to do them. And I'm going to make sure of that. So just know, if you put your name over there, you're going to get a call or a text or an email. It's going to happen. We're going to make sure this happens. And for those of you who don't feel like you're ready or don't feel called to be a small group leader, that is perfectly fine too. Just know there's going to be small groups to sign up for. And whether, whether there, there's only one day out of the week that you can, 
that you have time and that there's one available, but it says married people, I don't care, just go. Even if you're not married, just go. Because guess what? You'll probably learn something. Just saying. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're married or not married or you got kids or you don't got kids. Like, we all have something that we can impart on other people. Whether you've been a Christian for 20 years or 30 years or five years or two years, it doesn't matter. You all have, everyone's got experiences, life experiences. Everyone's got different things in their lives that they can say, hey, look, I've been through this and I can help you through it, you know? I, I know there's people out there that have been through things that I've never been through. And someone could come to me and be like, hey, this is going on. And be like, whoa, that's, uh, yeah, I've never done that before. But I will do my best to help them through that. But if there's somebody that, you, that, that I know that's been through that and can help them through that, I will help, like probably get that person involved because be like, hey, uh, Bev, I've never dealt with this before, but I know you have, you know. Just saying. I am great at finding answers, but I don't have them all. <laughs> and she'll be, no, I'll be the first one. She'll be the second one to tell you that I don't have all the answers. Yeah, I'm going to keep bringing you into this because I'm up here, so you have to. But, huh? I'm nice. I'm nice. But, so. I don't want to keep reiterating myself and being redundant, but we should help others do what is right and build them up. How great are we as a, as a society of tearing people down? You know, we're like experts. We can, we can tear them down like with the rest of them, but is that what we're supposed to do? No. Do we know that's what we're not supposed to do? Yes. But do we do it anyways? Sometimes. So we've, we've got to recognize those times, especially if we're going to be a leader, you know. We've got to recognize those times when you're like, about something's about to come out of your mouth, and you're like, probably shouldn't say that, right? <laughs> so, so if you are called and you feel like you're called to be a leader, then we really got to nail down some certain things and some and we we've, we've all got to watch our behaviors and watch what comes out of our mouths i mean that's a given because we are like i said great at tearing each other down but we need to continue and for those of all of you who don't have my contact information since i said everybody needs everybody's there's mine so if you want, you can call me. If I'm just going to tell you right now, if you call me and I don't have your number in my phone, I probably won't answer, but leave a message and I will return it. <laughs> if you text me, just tell me who you are. So, um, but I am not going to tell you guys that you need to get everybody's contact information and not give you mine. So there you go. Um, yeah uh, one last thing to give you guys before I let you go is a secret that I didn't tell first service because I forgot it's a secret Should don't tell anybody this because it's a very dangerous secret and there's two words that are the most dangerous words you can use when you're praying and you're talking to God use me don't ever use those two words together if you're not ready for the answer. All right? <laughs> so, Lord, thank you for this time you've given us together. I know it went quick, but I hope that uh, something that you have for people today was expressed, Lord, because that is our only goal as I'm standing here, Lord, in front of you and in front of everyone. Uh, we just ask that you would continue to uh, strengthen us throughout this week, Lord, and continue to uh, encourage us.
as we go from this place and help us to rely on each other when we need help in your name. Amen. Have a good day. Update on Tim and Kehlani. They, um,